Kuchenberger, the superintendent in Scarborough. And we're here today at the middle school filming our second episode of season two of our monthly television show, Inside Scarborough Public Schools. The purpose of this show is to break down the four walls of the schools and allow the community in so that you can see all of the amazing things that our students and staff are up to every day. So come on in and join me as we visit the middle school. the hallway but you guys are having lunch. What is that about you both? Can you tell me? So we sometimes we like to have some quiet and we don't want to be in the cafeteria because it's too loud in there. So sometimes we come here and have lunch. So this is a choice you get to because the cafeteria doesn't hold all the kids. Some kids can choose to eat out here. Yes and there's some peanut free tables out here. There are a few tables and then there's some other kids just like to sit out here. So you two must be friends. Yeah. How long have you known each other? Um, just this year. Because she's lived here. So. And what grades are you in? Sixth grade. So how are you feeling about your transition to the middle school? It's great. great. It's kind of stressful, but once you get into the schedule, it's a lot better. Do you guys know any good stress, stress management tips that you might want to share with our viewers at home? Well, it's sometimes a good, a good idea to get your mind off things and to just kind of zone out like when you're not doing anything important. And Sometimes you, need, like, you should have, hang out with your friends. Have a little downtime. Yeah. yeah. Do your teachers talk to you at all in crew about, or in your classrooms, about growth mindset or other strategies like mindfulness that maybe you need? Uh, yeah. yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? So we're learning about um, that we we can do it, but like if we get a bad grade, it doesn't mean we can't we can't do it. It just means you have to keep yeah. trying. Yeah, and you shouldn't say, I can never do this. You should say, I can't do this yet. So it kind of gives you confidence. It helps you focus your energy on your effort that you're yeah. going forward, right? Yeah. So like one of my favorite songs I sing all the time to my daughter is, you can do anything if you try, right? Yeah. Do you guys believe that to be true? Yes. Yeah. So in math, not only are you practicing your skills, you're learning really healthy habits that can help you in life. Yeah, and we also talk about it in wellness a lot, which is... Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your lunch. So we're here in the professional learning space at the middle school. We found a quiet place to tuck away and talk with our new middle school principal, Diane Netto, and our experienced assistant principal, David Courier. Um, David has been in the Scarborough Public School District for a number of years, and the last 10 years has been um, the strong support in the assistant principal role. So I'll start by first asking you, Mr. Courier, how has the transition been? bringing out a new principal. It's been a wonderful transition. Diane has stepped right in. She understands where our school is going and, and has been a great leader for the initiatives that we've put in place. She comes with a lot of experience and uh, ha it has been a wonderful transition. I would say much the same at the district level. It does feel like you've always been a part of the team. How are you finding your transition? Yeah, I think the transition has been a very positive one. I'm really enjoying my start here. I've just been amazed by um, how committed our staff is in terms of digging in. We are doing a lot of work this year with our PBE initiative and with starting our crew, which is our advisory, and to witness the work that our teachers are doing and that ability for them to connect and work together has just been wonderful. Um, so it's been very welcoming. So you mentioned a couple of really big initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, PBE is our transition from a traditional teaching and grading system to a proficiency-based education system. Right. And you also mentioned the, um, the new advisory block that we call CREW here at the middle school. Right. 
how do you utilize this space or what is the type of professional learning and support that staff is getting um, here in the middle school to best understand the, those um, big transitions but also the impact that it's having on kids? Right, so in terms of that professional development piece, that is a critical piece. We can't just change the way that we do school mm -hmm. and expect everybody to kind of just innately know what to do and so we're very fortunate we have two instructional coaches that are working um, in this space that we're sitting in actually um, and having ongoing content area meetings where they're taking a look at um, what do we know about our curriculum what are our learning goals how are we aligning that to the ways in which we instruct and assess students and really digging into the data about so what are our students telling us about what they can know what they know and are able to do and then planning forth some of those next steps and so again there really is a very strong sense of collaboration and collaborative effort um, it's been just wonderful to see that there um, is this coming together versus teachers um, all operating independently and trying to figure things out. Sure, really truly co-laboring towards <clears throat> the common goals. Yeah. So Mr. Curry, I know you do a lot of work with supporting our students, um, both when they're making good choices and when they're making some unexpected choices. Can you talk a little bit about the work that you've been doing with restorative practices as part of your discipline philosophy and also maybe speak to the to crew a little bit for us? Sure, why don't we start with crew. Okay. Uh, crew is uh, part of our daily routine. We have crew two times in a four day rotation and the other two days are support groups uh, for our students called RISE. So students are able to uh, reach back for their teachers when additional learning needs to take place. And they've also used that time to excel if students have already uh, uh, got it in a section of the curriculum, they can extend their learning in that particular item. Uh, as far as the, um, the crew piece, we do meet every, uh, every other day for our crew, and that's about making connections mm -hmm. with a small group, and all of our groups are roughly 11 to 12 students to one staff member, and it might be a staff member that the students have and maybe someone that they've never met before. But what that does is allow us to have the opportunity to make more connections between our staff and students in areas that they might normally not have. Yeah, we know how important relationships are, and I love the idea of crew at the middle school, similar to the advisory at the high school, to allow students to build this bond with another social network that they may or may not already be connected to in their extracurriculars or in their classrooms. Um, so I like how um, that consistent support is then established for them over their experiences in middle school. They're with the same kids, mm -hmm. is that right? Yes. And the same advisor for all three years that they're here in the middle school, for, or does it change? This is our first year, so right now we're looking at just the one year, and to say there might be that one year, or it might be two or three years that they're with students. For example, our sixth grade staff members are with sixth grade students, and as they transition to the seventh, chances are they'll be with seventh grade teachers. Okay. So it's, it's a little bit different than the model at the high school, but Correct. it has the same foundation. Correct. So I'm noticing behind you there's this data wall, and it looks like you've been looking at some data around math and reading and connecting it to the standards. And how, how is this supporting the PBE work and the other work that you're doing around educating the whole child in the middle school? So again, um, you know, this is allowing that focused conversation to take place versus, you know, um, other models that I've seen where there's an, just an expectation that teachers are going to come along. Um, and so this is a place wherein teachers really examine, like, what unit are we working on? Where are we, um, you know, in that planning stage or, you know, I gave this formative assessment to my class today. Did you give it in yours? Let's sit down and see what that's telling us um, so that we're really being deliberate in our planning and instruction for students. Um, and, and at the same time, really making sure that we're paying attention to what those data points tell us about where students are at so we can figure out how to best support them and move them forward. And that includes either end of that mm -hmm. spectrum so that we have a lot of pieces that are in place. 
um, when kids are not yet and they haven't quite developed. But you know, we also have that um, you know room as Mr. Courier was talking about for um, students who are meeting the standard to have deliberate opportunities to exceed that standard as well. Um, and, and that's really what I see in terms of the power of the PBE system mm -hmm. versus a traditional um, you know, way of um, scoring and grading students because we're not just saying this is our seventh grade curriculum and you know, if you meet it, great. Um, we're saying here's where we're at, this is what we expect, but then we're also saying and if you're ready for another set of challenges, we're having some of, we're having those extensions available for students. So really trying to do whatever we can to, you know, help kids get traction on moving forward and understanding that, you know, the, those opportunities to learn are infinite, not, you know, time bound or, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, according to unit. So these are two, I'm hearing like two really big shifts that is very different from the education that I experienced when I was in school and mm -hmm. you probably, I'm mm -hmm. sure as well, that um, not only are the teachers coming together and looking at student evidence of learning um, as a team and really looking at the kids as our kids, not just my kids in my class. or Correct. My, there are kids as a whole. And also that students are getting really individualized attention and customized curriculum access to the curriculum right. really through this work and yeah. that to me um, sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, the other thing that I've heard you talk a lot about at the middle school is the work that you do with restorative practices. Mm -hmm. So could you define that a little bit for us and those that are watching at home? What does that mean um, and why is this a, uh, an effective strategy? The important thing is it's a lifetime lesson for students that relationships are important throughout our whole lives. And it, we talked a little bit about the relationship in crew. With relationships, sometimes there are some damage where someone might say something or do something that, that uh, impacts that relationship. It could be between friends, it could be between staff member and student. Whatever dynamic it takes on, it's important not just to ignore that, but to look at what caused that, mm -hmm. what we need to do, and how that's really impacted someone else. So the empathy piece is very important. If I say something mean to someone, I have to realize that I need to take ownership for that comment, but I also need to understand how that made them feel. And in the past, many people have said, oh, just separate students, but that doesn't work. And students generally will get back together and mm. repeat the same behavior. What we want to do is to take care of that before that escalates. Mm. And so most often we will have a student fill out a uh, reflection form that asks what happened, be specific and honest, what were you thinking at the time? And one of the most important questions is, what do you need to do to make things right? Yeah. And so it puts the ownership into the student's hands to say, all right, yes, something did happen, and this is my plan for correcting that action. And we have found that to be very powerful when students, students or staff, sit down and they have that conversation, a very rich conversation that, that doesn't assess blame necessarily, sure. but it takes the fact that I may have said something to you and I need to apologize. And that apologizes. That, that apology needs to be genuine. And we have found by using a restorative practice model that those relationships are repaired and people are able to move on. And whether they, they might be friends again, they might not be, but they can be respectful. Mm -hmm. And that is such a lifetime experience, a lifetime lesson, because things are going to happen in every level of your lives, right. but how we handle that in a respectful manner is the whole premise of, of the restorative practices. Yeah, it really ties into that learning and growing, right? Yeah. And middle school, you know, I think understandably is a time where, you know, many of our students are asking themselves questions about who am I, where do I fit, um, you know, what kinds of choices do I want to be making? And oftentimes there are mistakes along the way. Sure. Um, and that's a natural part of learning. And so the restorative approach really allows us that opportunity to help kids recognize that, 
yeah, sometimes things are going to be a little bit bumpy, but then it's what, how do you step back and what do, what do you do and what are the supports that you look to to help you figure out how to grow from that and how to choose differently in the future. Absolutely. I mean, this is something that many adults are working on as well, mm -hmm. right? That you can't underestimate the value and the power of true right. empathy, but then also civility. So knowing that not everyone is going to be your friend, but you can always be respectful and kind and civil. So I think that, um, you know, just your approach here at the middle school, our approach as a district at really looking at all aspects of what it takes to create um, a student who has the skills who to thrive in life. This isn't just about making it through sixth grade or mm -hmm. you know eighth grade graduation. Okay. I, it, this is about life skills. Absolutely. And so I think that authentic relevance um, is really going to resonate with our students. And I see the shift already and hear it in students' language as they're talking to each other, mm -hmm. um, to their parents uh, about their learning, right. and also in the choices that they're making. Right. So one final question I have for both of you. Is there any um, hidden secrets here at the middle school, some greatness or excellence that's happening that maybe the public isn't quite yet aware of that you might think you want to share? One or the, something that makes you proud? One of the things that, that I would say makes me proud every day is when we interact with students yeah. and how polite and how positive they are. And I know that uh, you just spoke with students in our our lunch lounge area and students thank you for the conversation and that's what right. we see when we hold doors for students and, yeah. and they thank us and we greet them in the morning and mm -hmm. they always come in with a smile on their face and that's what makes my day every day when I right. get to see students. Yeah I do think that value of that informal connection is so huge and I think that's something you know that that has been really big for me as I've come on as new principal and I would echo that. I have been so impressed by the level of engagement and respect on the part of students, especially for myself as a newcomer to the school um, because, you know, again, I think my approach has been somewhat informal in terms of, you know, chatting with kids or getting to know them and, and it's just been amazing to see, you know, how um, engaged they've been, which is wonderful. And kudos to the parents, right? With we absolutely, we know that parents are your yeah. are every child's first teacher, and right. so that that says a lot about the support mm -hmm. and engagement of our parents. Mm -hmm. So, do you think we could sneak into a couple of classrooms and see some learning in action? Certainly, definitely. Can. For you to follow, to add to your Google, your Google Classroom, you're going to add this as a summary. Okay, so, how has that goal been going? So, you're going to write a whole couple of paragraphs about, look back over your notes, how to jump. Have you, how many have you been successful with it? How many have you been successful with your goal? So tell me about it in detail. What worked for you? Why were you successful on some days and maybe not on others? That reflection will help you set up your new goal, right? So go ahead and fill that out. Give me a good paragraph or two, send it to me, and then we'll start our discussion. That's okay. That's right. Tell me what you can do. So, Bryce and Ellen, when I walked into the classroom, I heard your teacher talking about goals that you have set. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us in the community a little bit about what are your goals looking like and how are you monitoring those goals? So, earlier this year, we did a nutrition kind of like thing where we had to track what we were eating. And then after that, we looked at it like in a fall thing and we set goals of like either eating more fruits or just simple things but could definitely change easily over time and for me personally i chose eating more fruit because i just eat a lot of meat so it's, it's like during dinner or lunch maybe still eat meat of course and they have protein but also maybe eat some more fruits to get like um, natural sugars from that and stuff Great. So how are you doing on your goal? I'm doing really good. I, uh, I'm i using sticky notes like sometimes in my room and I'll, I also have a alarm on my phone. To remind you to eat some fruit? Yeah. And um, are you tracking like your progress in any sort of way? Yeah, or just every like health class and uh, like as soon as we get here we have this well, um, and we track like what or how it's been going. Like a wellness journal. Yeah, kind of. Wow, I love this. On October 4th, do you mind if I read what you wrote? Yeah. It says, life is going well. I'm happy. I really like I apples and bananas. Please 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 how about for you, Owen? What are your goals? Oh, uh, well, same thing with him. I have the 
go with the nutrition goal setting, uh, which I've also did fruit because uh, my grains were very high and I had to lower down my grains. So I decided to work with my dad about getting uh, to eat more uh, fruit and uh, vegetables. Uh, and then some of my other goals is just like simple goals like for my academics, math, science, social studies, ELA, just getting making sure my grades are level and good. And that you're putting forth enough effort. Yeah. So nutrition plays such an important role in that, right? You have to be properly nourished mm -hmm. and hydrated. Hydration mm -hmm. yes. is one of my goals um, because I get so dizzy sometimes I forget to even drink water. But that really helps you be able to put forth your full academic effort. Yes. So I like how you're already at such a young age seeing the connectivity between that. Mm -hmm. Did you know that every single leader in the district, principals, myself, other central office administrators, this year we're all writing not only a professional practice goal, mm -hmm to get better at our craft of mm -hmm. teaching and learning, mm -hmm. but we also are creating wellness goals. Oh, really? Wow. And so for me, I'm looking not just at like, what can I do in terms of my nutrition, but like my mental health, mm -hmm. my social health, my physical health, um, taking all those factors and trying to manage my stress, right? Yes. So that's great. Is there anything else you think the community should know about Scarborough Middle School? I mean, it's just because I'm new this year, uh -huh. and coming from Falmouth, I feel it's been really well in just making new friends, and I even knew Owen before I came here from Cub Scouts, and I just think it's been going really well, and I really like the school. So a warm up in the community? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, and for me, I've been here since my uh, first grade year. I've been to pretty much two of the elementary schools just by moving house to house, so yeah. I've been to like... Uh, Eight Corners, Pleasant Hill, Wentworth, and now I'm here. This is my last year here, so next I'm going to the high school. And all in all, it's been a really good experience here. Awesome. Well, keep working hard and keep setting those goals. Okay. Okay. Good job, guys. Can you guys sort of tell us and the, the viewers at home what it is that you're actually doing here in this experiment? Um, we're testing to see if um, one substance, which is water, can have a chemical reaction and change into another substance. And why is that important? Or why is that interesting to learn about? Um. <laughs> well, we're testing like the electrolysis, so it's just kind of cool to see like, what happens and the reactions. Yeah. Have you been thinking about like how this happens in everyday life when it's not a science experiment? Mm -hmm. Like how other things that you use on a daily basis are chemical reactions. All right, so what are you actually doing right now? Um, we're going to take the electrodes um, off and then put in the stoppers. Okay. Yes. And what is that, what are you trying to, why are you putting the stoppers in? So that we can take these out, the tubes, and then, push it, push it. It's which other one? And then we can Okay, and what's your prediction here? What will what do you think will happen? Uh, well, um, if we do it right, then the matchstick should light back on fire to produce the flame. And um, because of what what's in here again? Oxygen. So when the oxygen reacts with the amp like the embers that that oxygen is gonna, okay. Hopefully. All right, let's see. So I noticed that you're both wearing safety goggles as well. Is yeah. that? Yeah, he, which is what makes us. Make the amber. Get up, open. Right, almost. I saw it surge. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do the one that hopefully makes a boom sound. <laughs> Ready? Oh, I noticed too that you put the hot one in the water. Is that another safety technique? Joseph, yeah. I can't cork this in this. Oh, I yeah. have two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what should she be listening for? It's like a little, it's like a pop sound. So it goes like, me. Okay. Get okay, ready when you run up. Child proof. 
So this one we're not gonna um, let the ember die. Okay. Ready? Go no. Oh, I heard it. Yeah, that's all oh, that. Success. Yes. Good job. We're in the middle school learning com commons with our new middle school, full-time middle mm -hmm. school librarian, uh, Amy Robertson. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what's been happening in the learning commons at the <laughs> middle school. I heard it got a little bit of a facelift. Yeah, so we're lucky we got some new shelves um, over the summer at the beginning of the school year. So we're trying to transition from a traditional library into a learning commons where we can move the space around to accommodate different kinds of uses. Um, so all the shelves are on wheels and so we can reconfigure the space as needed to have like large group meetings, like small group, like make little like nooks, you know, for people to read in or do independent work. So this is the first year in years that the middle school has had a full-time librarian. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm noticing that you're not just like shelving books and checking books in and out, you're actually teaching a class. What yeah. are you teaching this class today? Um, so today we're talking about digital media and the role it has in our lives and what we feel about it, how um, the adults in our lives feel about our digital media usage, the things that we do online. Um, and so we're just talking about that and um, and then we're going to have Officer Pellerin come in next week and then um, Michelle Grant, one of our school counselors, to talk about um, cyberbullying and how mm. to um, make a positive impact online. Yeah, so this is a really challenging topic for students to navigate, but it's also challenging for us as parents to mm -hmm. navigate this whole social media aspect of just growing up yeah. and always being on and always being connected. What kind of tips would you have for parents around monitoring maybe social media use with their middle school students or um, just tech use in general? Sure, I think it's important to try to know what your um, students are doing um, on their phones, on tablets, or, or whatever. I know that different phones have the ability to kind of, you know, keep track and check in on what's going on. I think that's um, important. Um, I have a nine-month-old, and so I'm thinking a lot about my own um, usage of mm. digital media at home and what I want to model for him. So I, you know, I like to be on Facebook and uh, browse the web and all of that but I know as he gets older like I don't want him to see me doing that all the time because mm -hmm. I don't want him to be doing it all the time so like what kind of um, modeling can we do for our our students for our children our yeah. children uh, we were just talking about how parents are every child's first teacher so I think yeah. that's really smart advice yeah. well thank you for sharing the learning comments with us of course thanks so Lana and Nick I know you're learning about positive digital footprint here in the learning commons. Mm -hmm. um, do you, are the two of you on social media? Yes. Yes, but my parents monitor it. Your parents do monitor it? Mm -hmm. What type of social media do you access? I have Snapchat and Instagram. How about you, Nick? I have Snapchat and Instagram. I do too. Yeah. So click back. That seems like a lot to manage. What do you What do you do to make sure that you keep your profile smart, safe, healthy, appropriate? Good. I keep my account on private. Mm -hmm. And I only post things that I feel comfortable with. And yeah. You got it. Um, well, see. I don't keep my account private. Um, I probably should. I got told to by mm -hmm. um, my sister. But um, I just post stuff yeah. like cool pictures of my house. Like I zone in on really cool stuff. And it's, everything's blurry around it except for that one picture. Okay. So you're into photography, mm -hmm. and you find social media as a way to share your art, your photography? Yep. Okay. What do you use social media for? Um, mostly communicating with my friends through, like, photos, I guess you could say, like, commenting, or, yeah, basically. Yeah. Sharing experiences mm -hmm. and things like that? Yeah. Awesome. So what do you find challenging about navigating this technology world? I mean, for some older people in the community, like myself, I didn't grow up in the digital age. Um, and it seems scary to us. Do you find it challenging or worrisome? Well, it's kind of sometimes like hard and it's frustrating when you see other people doing stuff without you. It makes you kind of feel left out. So there's ups and downs of social media, but it's really like oh, just a way to communicate and it's not bad unless you use it in a bad manner. Very good advice and smart thinking. <laughs> I, I agree with that, and it's definitely challenging when people are bullying you, which mm. has happened to me before. 
on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm excited to know that Officer Pellerin is going to be coming in and talking with you guys yes. about yes. how to avoid that mm -hmm. um, and also what to do if it is happening because yeah. it's important that you know how to communicate that with the adults in your life to help support you. Mm -hmm. How do you see it as a tool? I'm finding it to be uh, an amazing tool for me. Yes. Well, it's really just based on kind of sharing experiences but there's also like other things where you could like see other people other people's experiences and um, you can just kind of like get ideas I guess you can say it's kind of like Pinterest which is you get ideas from stuff and you do it yourself and for researching in school mm -hmm. and things like that too like beyond mm -hmm. the social part of it yes okay how about you how do you use it as a tool I use it as a tool for sometimes like you know how um, some people out there like don't have enough money and they're trying to do a fundraiser, they can add links onto that post and then you can go on a link and help them. So and donate. Yeah. So okay. philanthropic reasons. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, you guys have a lot of work ahead of you as sixth graders, mm -hmm. and I think this adds a whole nother layer to it mm -hmm. that, you know, some of the grown-ups in your lives didn't necessarily have to manage in addition to mm -hmm. everything else. So stay smart. Thank you. Thank you. Learn a lot about it, mm -hmm. right? Think before you post, mm -hmm. and if you ever need anything, you know who to go to, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Inside Scarborough Public Schools. Here at the middle school, we learned all about proficiency-based education, what crew time is, and how students are using a growth mindset to help them focus on effort, manage stress, and, and really hone in on overall wellness at, in their middle school years. And we know from talking to students that not only are these skills going to help them be successful today, but it's going to help them thrive through life. Until next time, I'm Julie Kuchenberger, your superintendent. Thank you for watching this episode of Inside Scarborough Public Schools.